guys, we're going to be going over Lesson Plan 7 today. Lesson Plan 7 is going to be a modified guillotine from when your opponent draws the line and you grab the far lapel. This is a one-handed application submission, and we're going to go into a whole series of different ways to finish the move from stepping on your opponent's hip and falling back to him tripoding and you escaping your hip and stepping on his hip and using that for an application, how to feed the lapel, and, um, and pretty much how to get into it. Hey guys, we're going to look at a variation of a one-handed guillotine um, with the same concept being able to apply just like a regular guillotine. We're going to use a setup of when somebody draws the line on you is like the really best time to apply this guillotine. I found a lot of success in it. And so what you can do is you can run these drills before you go to this move. Go down to all four, sir. The first drill would be me in my front headlock, but not, not controlling the front headlock, just positioned out on my partner. And then it, it's called the spin drill. Go, move, spin behind. Always keeping a hand on the head when you're in front of it. Change, change in direction. Keeping your chest on their back. If you're doing this drill right, your, your part, sometimes your shirts get tangled up. The key really not so much. Now, we're gonna do the same drill with drawing the line. He's down, and if I were to say, go, he would draw the line, go. And then of course, he could apply that and go to the single to strengthen his position. Before he goes to the single, however, I can reach around the head and apply the foil lapel to my hand. This is important. I'm going to shoot my hand up as deep as possible. Normally, you say, going for a guillotine, your thumb on the side of the neck, here. But in this position, I'm going four fingers inside the lapel, and I can have my hand this way or this way to pull down. Look at all the slack on the, the, the gi now, but look at this. I took away all the slack in my hands now. Four fingers on the inside are able to control his lapel and it's in a tighter position. This arm was up and my outside arm controls his arm so I can't relock. I'm gonna show this by going back into full guard. Now, all I need to do is compress down with this elbow and lift up with my wrist. So the lift up part is hand shoots up. So now my hand is at this angle. So when I go to apply the choke, my hand comes up. Those of you that like the karate kid, paint the fence. Same, same concept. <laughs> right now I'm shooting my hand up and then I'm shooting my hand down and in using my body to tighten it. My, my hand starts here, wrist goes up and so you can start it with this drill. I go to go behind him. He draws the line. Control the arm. Now, right now, circle, sir. My elbow and knee are controlling his arm. So he can't get his arm back. This hand is already shooting around his neck. Thumb underneath. I grab the lapel. Four fingers on the inside. I pull and lock down. I'm going to shoot to my full guard now. And lock my legs. Compress down on the elbow, shove my wrist up. That's a good one. <laughs> right? um, now, I know what you're saying. You're really tight on it. What happens if I loosen up because my grip fails me as I fall? Or well, the guy is bigger. That's valid. You're here and here, and now it's slack, but you, you felt like you had to fall down. Boom. You can now apply with this free hand, you can pull his gi down to strengthen your lock. Here and here. Now look, I loosened, I loosened my grip. I don't have, it's pain. He's flexing his neck like a turtle to defend that. So I bring the hand in and I pass the lapel deeper, compress down, shooting, painting the fence. So that's a modified one. Looking at two other modifications right now, 
we are going to say that maybe you're going against a bigger assailant and you need even more. And you know that when you land, he's already going to be tripoded up and that alleviates the pressure. That being said, same thing, I'm here. Now, as I go down on the same side that I have the head, I'm gonna step on his hip. And I'm gonna put my knee to my elbow, and I'm gonna collapse down. My foreleg came over, my left knee is on his hip. So if he's driving in, he's shoving my knee up to my forearm to get the choke. Yes, I still have the lapel, but even without the lapel, even without the lapel stepping on there, I can apply the same move. No gi. So, if I'm down in my guard and in this position, he may tripod to drive the weight into me to, de to decompress his neck. If that happens, I'm going to open my guard, escape my hip, Step on his hip. Here and here, beating, blocking, falling back. I have my full guard. He's up, driving in to alleviate the pressure. I open my guard. I turn my hip. My, tip, my hip has to go out. If you're a big guy, you may have to step on the mat and scoot out. Then, keep your back leg over the back tight. Bring your inside leg. Place it on the hip. Now, my knee is on my forearm and it lifts up as I throw the wrist up. If my opponent drives into me, it hammers my foot in, driving my knee up, choking off the air. Standing here and here, just like this, it looks here and here, this knee goes to that elbow and now I'm So, modified guillotine from drawing the line.